Hi everyone, welcome back to Sweet Little Trick Vlog. In my videos before, I never talked about any other famous YouTubers that live or used to live in China. And today is an exception. A few days ago, one very popular YouTuber, and most of you know him, uploaded a new video, The False Safety of China. And the reason I'm making this video, I want people to know what is really happening here in China from someone who lives here not from someone who used to live here a few years ago and i'm not going to say hey man you left china two years ago don't you have anything else to talk about now you live in the us so tell us about your life there it will make more sense maybe it's time to move on but and the funny thing is that he said it himself in his last video uh, that you can sell bad news better than the good news. So now he's trying to sell the bad news about China. But okay, let's not talk about this. What I really want to talk about is his last video. And it was interesting to watch it though, you know why? Because I remember that four years ago he made another video. The same topic. Is China really safe? China is very safe. It's an incredibly safe place. You don't need to worry about your personal safety. You don't need to worry about getting mugged or attacked randomly. In his video four years ago, he said, The whole purpose for me starting this YouTube channel in the first place was to prove to my friends and family that China was safe, interesting and not the place that you hear about in the news. So the answer to that question is yes, China is very safe. However, there are a couple of things here in China which aren't very safe. So basically he is saying that life here in China in general is very safe. Now let's take a look what was not safe for him four years ago. First thing that was not safe was traffic, especially if you ride bicycles or motorbikes. I don't ride a motorbike, but I ride bicycles. And here in China, for me, it's, it's quite safe because they have separate lanes for bikes. In Russia, we don't have this. So if you want to rent a bike, in my hometown you should go to some specific place yes you cannot rent it like like this in the street you should go to some specific place uh, you should pay the deposit and give them your driving license or maybe even passport if you will steal this bike they can find you and the funny thing that you can ride this bike only there but there are so many people there always and I remember once I fell from the bike over there <laughs> it was totally my fault but since then I was very afraid of bikes, of riding the bike and about motorbikes. For me, motorbike is the most dangerous type of transportation, not only in China but everywhere. If you get in an accident while riding a motorbike, the possibility of dying in this accident is gonna be way higher than while you're driving a car. Again, it's not only in China, it's everywhere like this. So you should be very, very careful while riding a motorbike. You should wear all the protection, the helmet and everything. <laughs> so what else he was talking about? Is the food. Food. It started raining, so I decided to go to Starbucks. <laughs> But I cannot talk here because the music is very loud <laughs> and you will not hear anything, so let's meet in a few minutes. So let's continue. Another reason why China is not really safe is food. And he is talking about that scandal with milk powder that happened in China a few years ago. This type of situation can happen everywhere. The question is how the government deal with this. As far as I know, people who were responsible for this, uh, they got punished. And not only with the fine that they paid, some of them they got into jail and some of them they were executed. And now the possibility that it's going to happen again is very, very low. Another thing about the food, he says like, uh, you cannot be sure where they grow their vegetables that you buy in the market and everything. In these six years that I've been living in China, I got food poisoning only once. And it was food that I cooked myself. It's very embarrassing to say it, but yeah, it happened. And not because I cooked some shit or something, it's just it was very hot. I cooked chicken and this chicken, I left it on the table for the whole day when I ate it in the evening of course I got food poisoning now let's take a look at his new video that he uploaded a few days ago let's go and talk about some of the things I experienced firsthand in China that might change a little bit of your perspective especially those who think that it's a 
a utopia of safety. I've seen someone stabbed before at an ATM when I was in a very crowded part of Shenzhen. This time he came up with a reason why China is not safe, is pickpocketing. So four years ago it was not an issue and now it is. Really hard to believe. Because this pickpocketing was an issue maybe 10 years ago. Yes. It happened a lot. And if you look at his footage that he's using for his video, you can see that they're old. Now with all these cameras everywhere, it's not a problem anymore. And again, he's talking about traffic, but he's saying the same stuff that he said four years ago. So I'm not gonna talk about this. Nothing new. What else is he talking about in his new video? That people can get stabbed when they're outside in the street. But I can say, yes, shit happens sometimes and these cases are very rare. It's not like every day it happens like few times. No, these cases are very rare and they go public. Also, he's saying, if anyone's got WeChat, you constantly see videos that are shared of people getting stabbed. Constantly, really, like every day, every month, every year. I can tell you that in six years that I've been living in China, I saw these videos in WeChat maybe uh, twice. And come on, I will never believe that in the United States it never happens. Maybe they don't use knives there, but they use guns. How many people got killed during this last protest in the United States, including children? It would be honest to talk about this as well. And the last thing he talks about is kidnapping. Yes, it's a big problem, but it's a big problem not only for China, but for many, many other countries. I can show you the statistics how many kids disappear in the United States every year. But it's not something specific to the United States or China, for many other countries as well. It's a big problem. Every year more than 15,000 children disappear in Russia. And of course this statistic includes all the cases when kids run away from home themselves or when parents get divorced and one of them, mother or father, takes the child. But still it's a lot. And of course this is the problem that all the countries, they should work really hard to try to solve this. So basically that's everything I wanted to talk about today. If my husband all of a sudden decided to create a YouTube channel where he talks some shit about my country, Russia, I would have had so many questions. Like, what a hack. What a hack. Okay, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.